Hey everybody, in this video I'm going to show you how to clean up a rusty pipe and prevent more rust from coming in the future. Let's get started. Now as you can see, this is my gas meter and the piping coming from the gas meter into the home has rusted pretty badly in the about three years or so since the house was built. There was no rust protection put onto the pipe at all and the plumber that installed this must have just been super lazy because there's really no reason to have all these little connectors and little short pipes between the two elbows. This really should have just been a single iron pipe between the two elbows, but I'm guessing that the plumber that did this either didn't have the right parts on the truck or didn't want to be bothered with going and getting the right parts. And so we have this mess, frankly. So if you're a plumber and you're watching this video, I'm really curious. Would you let me know down in the comments if this sort of thing is the kind of installation you've ever done or is there any good reason for this or is my guess right, the plumber was probably just pretty lazy. Now I could remove all of this section and replace it with a single iron pipe, but I frankly just don't like messing with natural gas pipes unless I absolutely have to, and I don't have to. This is a perfectly safe install, it just looks pretty terrible. Regardless of how it looks, it is perfectly safe, but the rust bothers me. It's not like the pipe's gonna rust completely through anytime soon, they're really thick but it does look pretty bad from the street. You can totally see this as you drive past my house and it's something that I'd like to get cleaned up and painted to match the gas meter colors so that it doesn't stick out quite so badly. All right, let's get started. So the first thing I'm gonna do is cut up a large cardboard box to use as masking to protect the siding of the house. You can see here I've cut a slit to go around the pipe and I'm gonna cut off that piece and put it back into the slit up above to fill in that gap. Now in retrospect, I really should have used a larger piece or maybe just cut this slit deeper because as it is, I wound up having a little bit of overspray that went up above the cardboard and onto the siding there and I had to take care of that and you'll see me doing that later in the video. Okay, with the siding all masked off, we can get started by mechanically removing as much of this rust as possible. Once we've removed as much as we can mechanically, we'll get into some chemical ways to remove it. So the first tool I'm going to try here is what I like to call the devil's toothbrush. It's a steel brush, it's fairly small, and it is pretty effective at removing rust from pipes like this. But if you don't want to put that much elbow grease in, of course you can always pick up a wire brush like this. This is the kind that just goes into your drill and then you just spin the drill and use that to remove the rust on the pipe. I'll show you both techniques. We're going to start with the hand brush first. And as you can see here, it is pretty effective at taking the rust off, but it does still leave a fair bit of rust behind. You'll see here in just a moment that the brush in the drill is actually much faster and does a better job in the first place. So um, the relative cost of these is not very high. I think the hand brush was maybe three or four dollars and the brush to put in the drill was le certainly less than fifteen dollars US. So uh, it's not that expensive to pick up these tools. And you can see here the drill actually does a really good job. You can see how much cleaner that pipe is after just the first pass. And after seeing just how effective the drill was, I stopped using the hand one and went to the drill for the remainder of the pipe. And you can see here, the drill did an excellent job at removing that surface rust, but the brush of the drill can't really get into kind of the smaller little areas. And so after I finished with the drill, I came back with the hand brush to get around into the little cracks and the threads as well as I could. Then I cleaned off the pipe just by rubbing it with a clean dry towel. And you can see quite a bit of rust came off. And when I was finished with this entire process, this is what I'm left with. You can see the pipe is substantially cleaner, but there is still a fair bit of rust on it. This might be okay to go ahead and paint, but I wanna try and get this as clean as I possibly can. So now that I've mechanically removed as much rust as I can, we'll switch to a chemical solution. And the one I'm gonna be using is called Navel Jelly. And this is a rust dissolver you can find uh, almost anywhere. And its main active ingredient is phosphoric acid. Now it's not a very strong acid, but I wouldn't be pouring it on my Cheerios anytime soon. So you will wanna wear some rubber gloves and something to protect your eyes while you're handling this. I like to apply this navel jelly with a little paintbrush like this. I picked this one up for, I think it was only a dollar at Harbor Freight or Princess Auto if you're in Canada. And I like to use these because they're basically disposable. I just throw them out when I'm done. Now it's best if you don't get any of the rust particles into the container of the navel jelly so that you can use it for future projects. So I'm gonna pour some out into a cup and then I'm just gonna use the brush to apply it pretty liberally to the entire pipe. 
Now this stuff is uh, kind of weird to put on. It's thicker than paint, but not quite thick enough that it will stick super well. So you, you want to put it on thick, but not so thick that it just runs off and dribbles all over everything down below. You can see here, just kind of working it into the pipe and especially into the threads and along the faces of these joints where there was still a little bit of surface rust left over. All right, with the navel jelly liberally applied, now all we need to do is wait. I'm gonna give this a good 15 to 20 minutes to do its work and then I'll clean it off with some water. If your pipes are in worse condition than these or if there was more rust that you couldn't remove mechanically, you may need to do several applications of the navel jelly. Also keep in mind, I think navel jelly works a little better when it's warmer outside. So if you're in a really cold area, it also might take multiple applications or you may just have to leave it on there for longer. All right, let's check back in a few minutes. Okay, it's been about a half an hour or so. I've got a bucket of water and a rag and I'm gonna use that to clean off the navel jelly. You could of course just spray this off with a hose, but I don't really wanna spray that navel jelly everywhere. I think this will be a little more controlled way of cleaning that up. As you can see here, it does come off pretty easily with this towel and every little section I would just rinse the towel off to make sure that it was as clean as possible and then move on to the next section. I don't want any of this phosphoric acid to be left behind because it will interact with the primer and the paint and make it so that it doesn't adhere quite as well as it possibly could. So I'm going to do everything I can to get all of this cleaned off. I've got a bucket of fresh clean water here and we're just going to use it to make sure we've rinsed all that navel jelly off of there. Okay, we can uh, wait for that to dry, then we'll prime it and paint it and we'll be done. Okay, so this has been drying off for about an hour now and while it is super dry, I'm going to go ahead and rub it down one more time with a completely clean, dry cloth to make sure that there's no leftover moisture that's kind of hiding in any of the cracks and crevices. Again, we want to make sure that we give the best chance possible for our primer and our paint to adhere perfectly to this surface. With everything completely dry and ready for paint, now I'm going to mask off a few things that I don't really want to get a lot of primer and paint all over. There's a little coupling ring here at the top of the meter that I'm going to mask off carefully and then I'm going to cover the body of the meter itself with some extra towels and just to kind of prevent a little bit of extra overspray from getting all over it. Now we're ready for some of this self-etching primer. This is the stuff you want to make sure that your paint that you're going to use will really adhere to this iron pipe and not rust ever again. Once the primer is completely dry, we're ready to apply the paint. And I'm going to be using this paint. It's uh, from Rust-Oleum, but I'm not sponsored by them or anything. This is just the paint that I like to use. And this is the specific color. It's smoke gray, and that matches really well for the gas meters, at least in my area, and I suspect in most of North America, but I could be wrong on that. You'll want to double check if you're going to be trying to match your colors. If your meter is kind of a steely gray color, this is the one you're going to want to use. This is excellent paint. It should do a great job of preventing rust in the future. I carefully applied three coats of this paint, making sure that it had time to dry completely between each coat. And then after the paint had had ample time to completely dry, I went ahead and removed all of the masking. All right, the masking is off and I should have been a little bit more careful right up here. I have a little bit of overspray. So luckily I happen to have a little bit of this house paint left that I can use to just cover that up and blend it right back in. It looks a little bit too light going on, but when it dries, it dries the correct color. So I'll just quickly reiterate, be a little bit more generous with your masking than I was. And once that house paint had finished drying, then I was completely finished with this job. And here's a couple of shots of what it looks like all finished up. As you can see, the rust is completely gone and it matches the color of the meter pretty well. All right, well, that's gonna do it for this one. I'm really happy with how this project turned out. The color's a great match. It looks awesome from the street. And hopefully I'll never have to worry about rust with this pipe ever again. 
If you've enjoyed this video or learned a little something, I'd really appreciate a little thumbs up down there. Let me know I did a good job. And if you'd like to see more videos like this in the future, you can always think about subscribing, but there's no pressure there. And as always, thank you very much for watching.